In this video, I'll talk about what the tangent bundle is from a practical point of view of calculus on, on manifolds. Okay, so we're taking a smooth manifold with a choice of charts that cover the manifold, right? So my charts will be phi, phi alpha, and they will be going from open parts of my manifold to open parts of R to the N. And we want to do the calculus, so we start with a function uh, f defined on an open subset of m going into r, and then we we know what uh, f uh, being in C1 means, right? It simply means that when I compose f with uh, the parametrizations coming from phi alpha, then I get C1 functions uh, as, as you learned them from calculus, right? So these will be uh, these functions here will be defined from open parts of R to the N going into R, so it makes complete sense to ask them to be C1, and then uh, being a smooth manifold makes this a really good uh, notion. Now, uh, the tangent bundle uh, comes in when you want to understand directional derivatives of, of these functions f. Now, what you can do is, at this point, you, you can just take directional derivatives of these functions f alpha uh, at uh, various points x and in various directions v, where v are just simply vectors in R to the n, and you do this in, in a way that you learn in calculus. Now, really, the problem with this, the obvious problem with this is that uh, uh, this description of directional derivatives depends uh, on what uh, chart you are in. So here I'm working with the chart uh, uh, phi alpha, and then in phi alpha this is how I take directional derivatives, but you might be interested in, in working with a, a chart, let's call phi, phi beta, right? So uh, this point x uh, corresponds to a point on the manifold. That manifold is covered by numerous charts, and you want to understand uh, how taking different directional derivatives and various charts are relatable to each other. So this is how really the uh, discussion of the tangent bundle starts. So really the, your question is, how can I find the, um, this vector v here appropriate? How can I identify this vector v appropriately in a different chart? So let's, let's work with a different chart. Let's uh, pick the point x prime uh, in, in the phi beta chart so that it corresponds to the same point on the manifold as the point x here. So now let me just expand this uh, directional derivative, right? So df alpha in the direction of v, right? So by definition, this is what that looks like. Now I'm going to stick an additional beta and its inverse somewhere in, in between. That's not going to change anything. But if you look at this uh, expression here, that's nothing but f beta, whereas the expression here, this is a smooth map. So in particular, I can apply the chain rule here to this composition, and that will give me this expression here. Okay, so in other words, right, uh, I get that this expression here is equal to this expression. Now, if, if you look at this uh, uh, point here, phi beta composed with phi alpha inverse x, well, that's nothing but x prime, really. So, so what, what you get to understand is that this vector v corresponds to this vector when you s go from the alpha chart to the beta chart, right? So. From the point of view of uh, doing uh, calculus with partial derivatives, really this vector v in the phi alpha chart should correspond to this vector v prime, let's say in the phi beta chart. Okay, so this is really it. And then you really should glue these uh, two vectors, directional vectors together. So this is uh, what you do to define the tangent bundle. So you start up with, you know, garbling together all the different uh, directions in R to the N attached to all the different points in your chart, U alpha. So you take this disjoint union, uh, uh, you know, fancy C, 
and then you say two points in this uh, disjoint union are equivalent if uh, the x and the x prime correspond to the same point on the manifold and uh, the directional uh, vectors uh, are relatable using this identity, right? So v prime is the same as the Jacobian of the transition map applied to v, right? So this is what we got from uh, up here, right? This is the rule we got from up here. Okay, now it's not difficult to show that uh, this uh, relationship tilde is an equivalence relationship, allowing us to introduce uh, the tangent bundle, which is nothing but uh, just the quotient uh, space of this uh, equivalence relationship. So I define that over here. Uh, and then really the, the upshot is, and I will explain you this theorem, uh, the, the tangent bundle is also a smooth manifold. And it's not too difficult to see this, but you have to sort of take this step by step. So the first thing that uh, the tangent bundle needs in order for it to be a manifold is a topology. And then the way you put a natural topology on, uh, on the tangent bundle is by these using these obvious maps that you have. So we have these maps Psi alpha that uh, are sort of injective maps of u alpha uh, cross rn into this collection c, right? So c up here was nothing but uh, this, uh, you know, just this disjoint union of these uh, directional vectors in our, our rn. Uh, and obviously there's a map from c to c quotient equivalence relationship, and that's tm. Now it's not hard to see that psi alpha is injective going from here to here. Uh, so, it's convenient to define uh, the topology on Tm in the following manner. Uh, a subset of the tangent bundle should be open if all its pre-images under the Psi alpha are open subsets of uh, this uh, direct product, which is uh, a subset of R2n. Uh, in other words, the topology I take on Tm is the push-forward topology of, of these maps Psi alpha. It's somehow it's the coarsest topology making all the Psi alphas uh, uh, continuous. Now, it's not difficult to check, based on how things are set up, that Psi alpha is a homeomorphism onto its image. So at the very least, we have produced a topological manifold at this part, where the charts are these maps uh, psi alpha. Now, what needs to be checked is that uh, these charts give me a smooth structure, meaning that the uh, transition maps are actual smooth maps. So uh, I do that next, right? So a smooth structure. So uh, it's no secret, right? I want to uh, put together the charts using the psi alphas, right? So the psi alphas are parametrizations. So I take their inverses. So I take the image of the psi alphas, I get these sets W alpha, which are subsets of the tangent bundle, and psi alpha inverse are going to be my uh, sort of intended charts. Uh, I have to check if the transitions are smooth or not, so I just uh, write out what the transitions are. So this, this is me attempting to write out the transition maps, right? So by definition, this is what they look like. So now, if the pair XV sits here in the domain of definition, so in Psi alpha inverse of the intersections of W alpha and W beta, then obviously, uh, So I, I, I can take x prime v prime to be the image of uh, x v under this map, the transition map. Well, what does this mean? Well, based on how the equivalence relationship tilde is set up, right? what this means is that x prime must be phi beta composed phi alpha inverse of x. Moreover, v prime needs to be the Jacobian of v at x of the transition map. Oh, sorry.
put the parentheses at the wrong spot. Okay, so this means that I have a uh, relatively simple expression for the transition maps. The first component is this, the second component is this. What's good about both of these is that both of these components are smooth maps, making uh, the tangent bundle a, a smooth manifold. All right. And then the, the one additional thing that I have on this smooth manifold is this projection map pi, right? So what, what this does is that locally it will take, at least in, in these different charts, it will just be a uh, projection onto the first component. It's not hard to see that this is also a smooth map. Moreover, for every point uh, on the manifold, its inverse is going to be a uh, R vector space. Now this R vector space is what's called the tangent space at the point P in M. All right, and, and, and to each tangent space, uh, to each point you have a n-dimensional tangent space attached, and then what the tangent bundle does is it just sort of collects all these tangent spaces together into a smooth manifold, as I explained in this video. All right, thank you very much for your attention. Go ahead, like, and subscribe if you want me to do more of such videos. All right, thank you very much.